Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle and I'm the owner of Damn Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that all of my groups and links are posted in the description below in case you guys want to check them out. In today's tutorial, we are going to be making this super cute 3D corgi tumbler. I created this tumbler obviously because I have a little corgi named Birdie and she is so fun and playful. And I saw this cookie cutter on Amazon and I thought I had to get it. I have had this idea in my head since the end of November, I think. And I just now got the time to sit down and play with placements and colors. And I love how it turned out. I think it's also perfect for spring. And obviously, if you have a different breed of dog, you can find a cookie cutter that matches your dog's breed and kind of paint it in colors to match your own puppy. But everything that you see listed here is going to be covered in our tutorial today. But as always, if you guys have questions about steps that I went over or materials I used, you can ask in the comment section or in one of my tutorial groups, and I will be happy to answer them. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on this tutorial, and I hope you guys enjoy. guys so before we get started on decorating our tumbler we are going to remove the bottom so we can do a fun glitter butt i like to take a metal putty knife and a hammer i just hammer that putty knife in between the bottom cap and the tumbler itself once it's wedged in there we can just pop that cap right off discard it and then decorate the bottom later if you guys did not know the steel magnolia tumblers you can remove the bottoms of almost all of their tumblers so you can do fun designs like this so we are first going to make our clay corgi i am using craft smart clay from michael's I like this clay a lot because it's very comparable to Sculpey Primo, but it is easier to work with. I am just using cornstarch just so my clay does not stick to my plexiglass. I am also going to dust it on the clay itself so my rolling pin and my cookie cutter will not stick to the clay. I just thought these little cookie cutters were so cute. I just came across them on Amazon after I had an idea of making a tumbler like this where one side was the corgi's face and the other side was the little corgi butt. And I thought that this cookie cutter was perfect. So we are just pressing down I think this looks pretty good. There were some details that weren't super great, so I'm just using my tumbler to kind of press down on some of those areas to get a larger indention. Next, I'm going to use my feather blade and I'm going to scrape the clay off of the plexiglass. These blades are very sharp, so if you have one or plan on getting one, please be careful. We don't wanna lose your fingers. So I am just peeling off any loose clay. I'm just using this other piece of clay just to kind of get the loose clay to stick to it. And then I'm just going to place him on my tumbler. Placement here doesn't necessarily matter. Um, the tumbler is going to be the same curve all the way around. So we just wanna get that initial curve on the clay as we bake it. I'm just using my little silicone tool to help kind of smooth out those edges. That way we have very minimal cleanup work or sanding to do after the clay is baked. And now we are going to just scrape off the extra clay that's on our plexiglass so that we are ready for the next piece, which is going to be the little corgi butt. So I am just rolling it out again. And 
and this was a two-piece cookie cutter one was the indentions and the other was the perimeter of the corgi again i'm just using whatever i have this is a candle just to press it down get those indentions and now we're going to use the perimeter cutter line it up and then we're going to press that down And then we're going to do the same thing and pick that up with our feather blade. So again, I'm just smoothing out the edges, getting rid of any little clay pieces that are on the edges of the little corgi. And we're just going to place him on the opposite side. And once I have my clay on there and I think that it is pretty secure. I am going to take this downstairs and we are going to bake it in the oven. I baked mine at about 255 for one hour just because I know my oven gets hotter than that. That is why I suggest having an internal thermometer so you can see if the number on the outside of your oven matches what is actually the temperature on the inside. You cannot burn your clay unless the temperature spikes. So if you set your oven to 275 and it's already a little hotter than that and then it turns on like I have a gas oven so if it turns on it will spike a little bit higher and if it gets above 300, 325 it will burn the clay. But I like to leave my clay in there for an hour at least. That way the plastic polymers have a longer time to bake together and form a really strong bond. And after we get our little corgi baked, we will be ready to move on to our next step. And just to point out, I said that I baked mine at 255, but my oven is really about 270, 275 at that temperature. Um, that's why I suggest having an internal temperature because you are supposed to bake clay at 275, at least the brand that I use. All right, so now our corgi is out of the oven. He is baked and we can paint him. I decided to paint him after we baked him just because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to paint him how I was going to do it but um so I just baked him first <laughs> so we are using pop of color paints I like using pop of color paints for quick little projects because it does dry fairly quickly which is what I was kind of wanting. I am just mixing together some colors to try to get that orange that is on Birdie. I am using, I believe it's neon orange, white, terracotta, blush, dark blush, and black pop of colors. And I am just going in with multi sizes of paint brushes and just kind of painting detail. She was upstairs with me like she always is. So I was just kind of looking at her and basing how I painted this corgi on her looks and her markings. Just in case I decided to keep this tumbler, which I still might, I don't know. So I was just looking at her and then going back and adding paint where I saw that color on her face. <laughs> so this part is pretty much your own creative freedom process. Obviously, if you have a different breed dog, you would have a different canvas to work with, different colors. But if you are doing this for somebody else or just a certain dog in general, you can always just pull up pictures on Google and kind of look at photos of certain breeds for inspiration on how you're going to paint them. And Birdie has more of the orange coloring on her head versus black that a lot of tri corgis have. but she has a lot of black on her body.
So again, I am just painting this in layers. I am just going back, editing colors. And then once I get done with the front side, we are going to paint the little corgi butt. This part was much easier because it's pretty simple. <laughs> the face was a little hard trying to get all of her markings on there just because I wanted it to look as close to birdie as I could get it. But the back was pretty simple. She has a black back with a little fluffy orange booty and when you are doing this make sure that you are getting the sides as well we don't want the front part to be painted and then have white around the edges and once we get finished painting both parts of our corgi we are ready to decorate the rest of the tumbler. So these two little corgi parts are dry and I am now going to take some alcohol and we're just going to clean off that paint just to make sure we have a smooth canvas to work with. And I am just measuring the very bottom of my tumbler. I believe it was an inch and a half. So I am going to cut the white off of this vinyl and then we are going to cut a one and a half inch strip off of this vinyl as well. This is my spring floral pattern that you can get on thedrunkflamingo.com. There's also a matching decal that me and Drea from OMG Tumblers and Tees collaborated with. She wanted a decal to match this vinyl, so I jumped right on it and got one created for her. And we are going to use this tool from Cami Page Boutique. This is her ultimate tumbler guide tool. I am just using this straight edge section so I can draw a straight line on the bottom of the tumbler that way I know my decal is straight or not decal the actual strip of vinyl I should say so now I have a straight line so I know that my vinyl is going to be straight if you guys have not checked out Brooke's website definitely go for it I do have a discount code in the description for you so we are just going to start by placing the section on there and seeing if our vinyl is straight. It was just slightly off, so I just had to adjust it just a tiny bit. So now it is lined up pretty well, so I am just flipping it over and I am smoothing this out. I am just slightly pulling it as I lay it down just so I'm sure that it's not going to wrinkle, we're not going to get air bubbles, anything like that. And it matched up pretty well. So now I am going to take a piece of painter's tape. I like to use painter's tape just to get a straight line when I trim off that little piece of vinyl. I'm just putting it right against that vinyl edge and using my blade to trim it. So once we have that part finished, we are going to move on and glitter the handle and the body of the tumbler. I like to use these mats I got from Artistry. Um, this one is very messy right now. I was trying to pick the side that had the least amount of glitter and epoxy stuck to it, but I think they are both 
pretty dirty. I really should probably clean them off. We are going to be using Artistry's Color Fix Paints to apply our glitter today. If you guys do not know, their Color Fix Paints are a paint primer and glitter glue all mixed in. So you can apply your base coat as well as your glitter in one step. Since we are painting this directly over a stainless base, the white did need a couple coats because I was using a white glitter. I did not want any of that stainless showing through. So I am not going to sprinkle glitter after this coat. It will be after the next one. But these paints are something that I love to have. I use them for a lot of stuff. Even if I'm just painting colors, they have a lot of different color options to choose from. I do have a discount code in the description if you guys want to try out these paints. One tip I will give is to add a marble or a craft rock that you have on hand, which really aids in shaking up the paints because they are a paint primer and glitter glue in one the different elements can separate and adding that marble really helps get everything incorporated and ready to use. So we are just going in with another coat of this white. I'm just making sure that all of that stainless is covered because I do not want it showing through this glitter. And once I'm sure everything is good and covered, we are just going to sprinkle our glitter on. I'm using Classic Martini Shaken from thedrunkflamingo.com. It is one of my favorite whites. It is a pure white that is sparkly with just a hint of little kind of silver flecks. There is no color shift to this glitter at all. It is just a sparkly white. It's really good to be used as a cheat glitter if you just want the underneath colors showing through and no shift. I use it a lot for my s'more cups. But once we have that part complete, we're going in with mauve on our handle. And I'm going to be using June Bug, also from the Drunk Flamingo, for this purple handle. And for this purple, I did not need to do a second coat. The purple I was able to apply and glitter in one step. And I am just sprinkling on that glitter making sure that I get every little section. And once this dries, I will spray seal it with Rust-Oleum two times. And once the clear spray dries, we will take it outside to epoxy. So I'm using Artistry's 1-1 Fast Set. Again, there's a discount code down below. If you guys have not tried Artistry's epoxy, it is my favorite one I have tried. I get very minimal bubbles. It dries in an hour and a half to two hours, and it can be used as a final layer. This is pretty much the only epoxy I use. I even use it for drips. But we are going to get that on there. Any area around the handle, I am just wiping off multiple times. I don't want epoxy to pull where the handles are, so I am just wiping around the handles where they meet the tumbler. I'm just going around it several times just to make sure that everything is covered well. And then I'm just going to wipe off the excess. And then we will hit it with our torch. I will do two coats of epoxy. I will sand everything really well. 
And now we are going to go around the edge with this edging tool from Cami Page Boutique. It is technically designed to edge vinyl. I guess that's what you would call it. Um, but I like to use it for as many things as I can think of. So I am going to start by heating up the rim of my tumbler. Typically, I would do this downstairs and I would heat the rim with warm water. That is the easiest way for me, but sometimes when I'm filming videos, it's hard to show steps like that. So I am doing the next best thing, which is my heat gun. You just need to heat it just enough to soften that epoxy to where the blade will come through. You don't need anything crazy. We don't need the epoxy falling off the cup. Sometimes I do use my blade to kind of help get that rim off. Sometimes it's hooked to the top of the tumbler. Even though it's cut, it still needs a little help getting off of the cup. And this one was a little tricky because there was a handle. I could not use the blade to cut that part. So I did just eyeball it and use my blade to cut a straight line that matched up with the other section. Yes, you have to be careful when you're using blades. I know I make a lot of people nervous. So once we have that edged, we are just going to take acetone and clean that rim really good, get any of that spray paint glitter residue off so that we have a nice clean rim, which I will show you guys right now. So that rim is super smooth, super clean. So now we are going to add our decals. These are just some paw prints, bones, and hearts that I cut out. I got these from Creative Fabrica. I will link them in the description in case you guys need some. I just cut them out in different sizes. Since this cup was on the smaller size, I did size these decals a little smaller than I normally would. I believe the largest one was about one inch. Most of them were about a half an inch. And I am just applying them in random form I am not somebody that likes things uniformed, so I don't like to make a pattern and wrap it around the tumbler. I would rather them kind of be scattered, but that, again, is just my personal preference. If you would rather make a pattern out of your paw prints and bones and apply it as a wrap, you can definitely do that as well. So once we have all our little decals on, we're going to apply our pinstripes. I do have a pinstripe file up on the Drunk Flamingo, which includes my most popular sizes I use, which is 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and 0 0.03. I like to have different sizes on hand at all times in case I want to layer them or I need different sizes for something. So I am just wrapping them around the tumbler. This first one is right along the vinyl edge. And I thought this purple and pink went well with the colors in the vinyl. And then I'm going to add one more thin glittered champagne piece. 
And all of my vinyl like this, the solid colors come from a local vinyl supplier, which is Perfect Press HTV. They are located in Norcross, Georgia. They are about a 30 minute drive from me, but I like to make a trip every month or so and kind of stock up on their colors. They have a great selection, great prices. They also have a bunch of HTV and um, DTF prints if you guys are into shirts as well. So once we get all of our vinyl on there, I am going to take some E6000 and we are going to pop on our Corgi's face and our Corgi butt. I think he's looking so cute at this point. <laughs> Or I guess she, since this is technically birdie. So I just like to apply a small amount of adhesive along the edges. You don't need huge globs. This is just to hold him in place until we can epoxy him. I like to use E6000 for projects like this because it gets tacky really quickly. That way it will bond to the cup quicker. I like to use liquid fusion for most of my items but it does stay liquid for a little bit longer and I want this to be attached quickly. So we are going to let his face sit for a little bit and once that is starting to dry we are going to attach his booty. So once his face and backside are attached, we are just going to sit and let this dry. And once he is dry, I am going to go back with some UV resin. I am going to apply this just over the edges of our pinstripes so they will not lift under epoxy. That is one of my pet peeves when these dang pinstripes just lift under epoxy and then you have to redo the whole thing. So now that the pinstripes are held in place, we are going to take this outside again and we are going to apply a thin layer of epoxy. For the first layer, when I'm doing 3D items, I do just a thin layer. I don't want something super thick because I don't want epoxy to pull or gather around the 3D objects. I am just applying epoxy with my fingers for this guy. Sometimes I do use a paintbrush. I can't remember if I used one. I guess I did. Just kidding. I used a paintbrush to apply it over the corgi, but I realized after the fact that I could just use my finger because it was just a very thin 3D piece. But he does have a lot of cracks and crevices in him from where the cookie cutter imprinted. So after I get done applying the epoxy, I do go back with a silicone tool and I dig out all of that epoxy that was in the little crevices. I get as much out with the paintbrush as I can, but a lot of these little holes were really small and the paint, paintbrush could not get in between. So I always keep this little silicone tool downstairs. And since it is silicone, once the epoxy is dried, it will just pop right off of the pink tip. So I am just digging out the epoxy because I don't want bubbles to be all up in the little corgi. So after this layer dries, we are going to do one final layer and then we are going to do our glitter butt. So the glitter butt is the very last thing that I do on my cups. I typically would paint the bottom, but since we did not paint the bottom on this one, I'm just showing you guys an alternative way. So I have some white UV resin that I got from CCDIY. I am doing a white base because I don't want the stainless to show through my glitter. 
I want it to be the bright glitter color, which you can get over a white base. I think I had a little bubble in here that I just popped with some alcohol and some tweezers. So I cured this for two to three minutes, and now I'm going to mix up some clear UV resin with some translucent glitter. I'm using Dusty Rose and June Bug, I believe. Both of these glitters are very translucent. I don't think I have any opaque pieces in there. And I am just doing a very, very, very thin layer. If you are using UV resin for your glitter butts, you want the thinnest layer you can get so that UV light can penetrate all the way through the resin. And you want to use translucent glitter. If you use opaque glitter pieces, chances are that UV light is not going to be able to penetrate through that glitter and you will be left with a sticky tacky mess. So I'm doing the same thing, this June bug, even the purple, it's purple opal and some other pieces, they are all translucent and you guys can see I am like spreading it on the bottom so it is not thick at all. You can see a lot of that white through there so it's not like a solid layer of glitter. It's just a little bit of that glitter mixed in with the UV resin. If you guys are unsure about UV resin I would just go with your fast set because that will definitely cure no matter how thick of a layer you put on. So I am getting my little logo tags from Mizzy's Doodles ready. I am painting the backside with a purple Posca paint marker. I had not used this purple before, so I had to pump it up. And you do not have to paint the backside of it. I am just doing it for a couple of my tags because it really helped the logo pop, which I will show you in a second. Y'all saw how it looked originally with just the silver writing or silver edging, I should say. And then I will show you what it looks like with the purple. So here's what it looks like with the purple marker on the back. I am just going to take my little tweezers, place it in the center, and then we are going to take our UV light again and cure this for two to three minutes just to make sure it's completely cured. And then we are going to go over the top side with a thin layer of clear UV resin. I like to add clear on top, that way the bottom of our tumbler is super smooth as well. And I'm just popping a couple bubbles that I see with the alcohol in my tweezers. And then we are going to cure this for two to three minutes. And I also like to cure the mixing cups that I mix my UV resin in. They will pop right out and you can reuse them. So once this is finished, we are completely done with our tumbler. I think it turned out super cute. I think these would be great gifts for people that love their pets like I do. If you guys decide to give this a try or choose a different breed to do a little 3D image on, please post in my groups, tag me because I love to see what you guys create and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or our Damn Fancy Tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.